An invitation of his master Jesus, who gave his life on the cross, who gave his life away, Peter will have to do the same thing. He will witness to Jesus by shedding his blood. What does that have to say to us in our, in our family community? You know, in the interior castle of St. Teresa, uh, in the seven dwelling places, chapter 4, paragraph 7 and 8, very important text for our minds. St. Teresa tells us, first of all, in that chapter, Sisters, don't think that all these graces of prayer that's been given to you are for your own comfort. No, that would be a mistake. These graces are to free you in order to follow Jesus crucified. All the graces of prayer are to free us to follow Jesus crucified. And then she goes on, in paragraph 8, she says, Do you know what it means to be truly spiritual? It means to be branded by the cross, to be a slave of everyone as he was. Pretty profound. She says, Keep your eyes fixed on the crucified, and everything will be small. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the crucified. His merciful, compassionate love is what he did on the cross. Keep your eyes fixed on him, and everything will become small for you. And do you know what makes you truly spiritual? It means to be read about the cross, to be a slave of everyone who has seen us. And I think that's so important for us, especially when we look at the gospel today, because this is what Jesus was telling Peter. You're going to be led someplace that you don't want to go. And we're all, we all have to surrender ourselves into God's hands and be led off as where we don't want to go. We have to put our lives in the hands of God. But we, in that, we have to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus to follow Him and to follow His way of living, His love for the Father, His merciful love, His compassion, His forgiveness of sinners, His helping people. Jesus helped people wherever He went. It was that life of loving service that, that we are asked to, to live in our daily lives. And we can only do that if we are men and women of prayer. Because it's prayer, as Teresa understood prayer, as an intimate sharing between a, with a friend, taking time frequently to be alone with, me, with the one who don't love us, that gives us the, the grace to, to follow Jesus every day and to live as Jesus said. To be a slave of every of, of everyone as Jesus was. And to be a slave means to be of service. It means to be a person, a man, a woman, who is concerned for other people. <coughs> to love them. To accept them. To grow in love every day. This is really what it's all about. In the bottom line, holiness is about loving. Contemplation is choosing a life of love. You know, I love what St. John the Cross, he often, he describes St. the contemplation in one place in his works, in the second book of the, of the Dark Knight, is a science of love. It's a science of love contemplation. And when St. Teresa talks about prayer, she says, prayer is letting ourselves be loved. It's making time frequently so that we can come to know the love of God for us. And when we know that, we share that love with others. And prayer frees us and transforms us to be slaves of God. And this, I think, is the heart of the whole Carmelite charism. A path of transformation. Being transformed to be ever more a loving person who serves Jesus in our world. An intimate friend of Jesus. And in prayer, we are free in order to give ourselves completely to God and to one another in service. I mean, there are many ways to think about our vocation to Carmel. But I think this, is, is, for me, this is the heart of it, is a life of transforming, a transformation where we 
keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, our intimate friendship with Jesus, which then frees us and heals us and transforms us to be his, to be slaves of one another as he was. And was to give our lives away. Okay? To really give our lives away as he did every day in, in, in all that we have to do in our daily life. And we can't do that without prayer. We can get it. It's only through prayer that we are really transformed. And there, therefore, the, our vocation to prayer becomes very, very important. But, it's, but I think we also have to keep in mind, yes, we're called to be contemplatives, to contemplation. We're all called to contemplation. In the fifth Roman places of, of the interior castle, St. Teresa says, you who wear this holy hat and are carnal are called to prayer and contemplation. But, she says, very important, in order to do that, you have to live a life of virtue. She says, if you don't live a life of virtue, you'll always be dwarfs. So we need a life of prayer, but it's just not my own personal prayer. It's prayer that is also expressed in my daily life by loving others, serving others, becoming more free and more, more, more detached, more humble, more truthful. It's really a life of virtue, of giving myself away and serving others. So they go hand in hand. They really go hand in hand. So we always must keep that in mind. I think the words, and this is a very important word to the St. Teresa, very important. She said, fix your eyes on the crucifixion. Look at Jesus. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus at all times. If we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus every day, in our personal prayer, in the Eucharist, when we read the scriptures, when, when, um, uh, in, our, in our daily relationships, to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and to live for Him alone, for His friendship, for the life of prayer, we will become more and more free to serve others and become more and more loving and express that love in our relationships with all that we do. So, as St. Peter, he had to keep his eyes fixed on Jesus, we do too. We don't know where it's going to lead us, always, but we know wherever it leads us is the best place. And where it leads us is in a life of imitation of Jesus. And I'll just say one thing, one thing, one thing. I think the scaffolding that you can see this morning that we all wear reminds us that we have to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. You know, it reminds us of, of our Blessed Virgin Mary, of her love for us, and how she had our eyes fixed on Jesus. Jesus was the, was the center of her life, and he has to be the center of her life.